You know where you have your view settings um, for Zoom? Like you have the grid view or an individual spotlight pin, whatever it's called. Um, so if you go up there and click on that, I don't know if it says view or grid view or if it gives you graphics, but if you click on that, you'll have an option that is to split your screen. So you'll have the zoom in one window or screen portion of the screen and then it puts like the whatever screen shared, it puts it in a separate window. And you only have that on the participant side, your side. I don't have it on my side. Um, and I wish I did because I have so many different windows open. It'd be nice to like have a split screen. So give it a try if you'd like. Where All right, so um, let's start with our agenda. Those of us who use the planner and write down what we're gonna do. Um, I'm gonna skip this video. I'm gonna hit it, uh, I think. Monday, Tuesday instead. Um, but write down, let's jump to this. Test, November 11th. That's Wednesday. So we're going to have a Zoom and we'll take our test then. That is out of the ordinary, right? So not something we're used to doing. We'll have to look up and see what time our Zoom is. So write that down on your planner. Dun -da -da -da. Today we're gonna to cover active transport and we're gonna turn a couple things in during the Zoom itself. Over the weekend, you're working on the 7274 review to prepare you for that test. So on your calendar, write 7274 review due Tuesday. So really what I wanted to do, cause we have so very few days, I don't feel like we have days for review. I really wanted to just say, do the review, the test is Tuesday. But um, hopefully, if we have an actual review day, that'll help us out with this test. This test is historically one of the two hardest tests of the year. This one in photosynthesis um, are the ones that kids struggle with the most, which means you just got to buckle down and say, I can do this for the next four days, right, to prepare. Okay. So we're gonna do some review of osmosis before we get into our new topic of active transport. Active transport is a short, um, short topic. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time on that. So first I want to remember about hypertonic, hypotonic, isotonic. Remember those terms? Hypertonic, more salutes. Hypotonic, less salutes. Isotonic, equal salutes, okay? So, um, let's number these one, two, three, four. So just write down on a piece of paper one, two, three, four. And make a guess. What do you think? What type of salute, or I'm sorry, what type of solution do you think each of these is? So, number one, do you think it's hyper hypo iso? Number two, number three, number four. I'm going to be calling on people, so you want to have a guess, right? So really you just need to look at the salutes to determine, um, you're looking at the ratio, I guess, maybe, of the salutes inside versus outside. So if you're ready for a guess, can you throw into the chat column, what do you think solution one is? Hypertonic, hypotonic, or isotonic? And if you just wanna use the prefix hyper, hypo, iso, you can do that. Throw in the chat, I'm letting some people in. What is it, hyper, hypo, or iso? So Riley has a question mark. Anybody want to agree with her or disagree with her? She's guessing it's hyper. Can she have some friends either support or correct her? Number one, what do you think, Ellie? Is it a hypertonic solution? Yeah. Good, yeah. Okay, so Isabel gave us um, the reasoning. So there's more salutes on the outside than on the inside. If we um, look at the water molecules, they're easy to see. Lots of water molecules. Outside, very few water molecules. But there is a lot of salutes, and the prefix refers to the salutes. So hyper is more than, right? So um, that's going to be a hypertonic solution. How about number two? Good, Brayden. Number two now. What do you think this one is? One molar glucose versus 0.2 molar glucose. Is the solution in the beaker hyper, hypo, or iso? Put it in the chat. Watch, you do go like this. You take your fingers, put them on the keyboard. 
Evan, are you typing? Merci beaucoup. It's a lot more interesting if you guys engage for both of us, more interesting for both of us. Okay, Elizabeth has a guess that it's, I, oh, I have a chance to do that. Okay, Braden's going with the same one. We got three, four, all thinking hypo. Okay, so one molar glucose, one is higher than 0.2, correct? So 0.2 is lower, so 0.2 is hypo, good. And I'm going after, so um, the last person who wrote to everyone was Kylie, so anybody after that? Number three, hypo, hyper, or iso? Brayden's got a guess, Jonathan's a green, Gabby's a green, okay, good, good, good. So we have four molecules of solute per four molecules of water, same thing outside, four molecules of solute versus four molecules of water, good, so that's iso. So underneath Cody's answer will be number four. What do you think about number four, hyper, hypo, or iso? Elizabeth is quick with a guess. Gabby's quick with a guess. They agree, Braden agrees. Good. So I don't actually see any solutes on the outside of this cell. So it definitely has less than inside. So outside is gonna be hypo, inside's gonna be hyper. Which direction will water move in this case? Will it move into the cell or out of the cell? Into the cell, out of the cell, into the cell, yes. So water will move from its highest concentration, 100%, to its lowest concentration. I don't know, maybe 30%, right? So it moves from its high to its low, the cell will swell. Over here, you were hyper, the water will move from where it has more water to where it has less water. So it moves out and the cell will shrink. Okay. So now, go to the Google Classroom and grab for me, please, osmosis practice. This one is going to be done in a breakout so that, like, we have the few that are willing to voice up, right? But maybe the people that aren't voicing up need um, to have a conversation about it, possibly. So this could help them. So everybody has that in, um, open. And I'm going to open up some breakouts. 